Hi, in this video, we will go over one of the three more mathematical questions that you will find from your chapter 2 homework. So this is a question dealing with 44. It says, if your reaction time is some number of seconds in that amount of time, how far does an object drop? Now, there are hints and there are relevant chapter sections that would help you as you are trying to think through how to do this question mathematically. So in the hint, it said that the example calculating distance traveled under constant acceleration dragsters would be the example that's relevant. And if you look at it, here it is, dragsters. It is mathematically very analogous, and what that means is both the motion of an object being dropped from rest and the motion of this car accelerating from rest are mathematically very similar. So this textbook example goes through it, gives you some equations that you would use, and if uh, after reading through this example, if this uh, example makes sense, then you can probably do the problem okay also. There's a little bit of shift in thinking instead of being horizontal acceleration, it's a vertical acceleration. But I think most people can handle that. Um, so the rest of the video is really for people for whom this example doesn't quite make sense. Because to tell you the truth, this example was drawn from a textbook that requires trigonometry and our class is meant to be conceptual physics. It's not meant to require large amount of algebra and calculations. So let me try to make some <laughs> sense of this. So what this equation says here, it comes down to saying this. Let me rewrite a slightly changed version of this. Um, and we can make a little sense of it. Uh, expressing it this way. So I'm going to put this uh, x naught with x to write it x minus x naught equal to the rest of what's on the right hand side. v naught times time plus one half times acceleration times time squared. And really what this means is in plain language this is the distance traveled, and that's equal to speed times the duration of time. And you might remember something like this from constant speed motion. So with uh, there being acceleration, what changes is now you have this second term. So it's plus one half acceleration times time squared. And one more thing that changes. This speed is the initial speed, what the object starts out uh, moving at. So for the situation like one described in this example and in the homework question, your initial speed is zero, which is why you only end up with this, one half acceleration times duration of time squared, and the textbook is giving you this equation. All right. So this might make some sense. Let me give you one more example um, to try to help draw out your intuition for a falling object like this. So this is a simulation where I can show you the familiar falling motions that you will recognize from everyday life and also make some measurements that we are not used to making in everyday life. So I have a ball at some height and when I hit play, it's going to fall. Hopefully this feels reasonable enough. It feels natural enough. All right, so let me go back. And just to do it one more time, in case you missed it the first time. So that's the falling motion. Now, this time I'm going to be a bit more careful and actually measure how long it'll take to fall through this height. And I'm going to do it by this stopwatch here. And I'm going to be very careful to try to stop the simulation the moment the ball hits the ground. So ready, set, go. All right. 
So about 1.3 seconds is how long it took for the ball to fall from the height that it fell from. Let's uh, try moving the ball a little bit to half the height. Then how long do you think it'll take to fall now? Half the time it took before, so before it was 1.3 seconds, so something like 6 point, uh, 0.65 seconds. Let's give it a try. Hmm, it's almost one second. Let me do it one more time. Yeah, almost one second. So, for the ball to fall through half the height it fell through originally, it doesn't take half the amount of time, it takes a little bit more than half. In fact, in order for it to take the exactly half the amount of time, it'll need to fall through a quarter of the distance that it originally fell through. Let me give it a demonstration. There, about 0.65 seconds. Let me try one more time. Yeah, about 0 0.6, 0 0.7 seconds. So this is the demonstration of that formula you have seen. So going back to the formula, this is the expression that you have seen before. And what I was demonstrating was that when the distance changes by a factor of 2, is reduced by a factor of 2, the time doesn't reduce by a factor of 2. In fact, in order for time to reduce by a factor of 2, then you have 1 half squared. So the distance is reduced by a factor of 1 fourth, 1 over 2 squared or 4. And that's what the demonstration was showing, that for the falling time of the ball to be half the amount of time before, the distance has to be a quarter of the distance it was before. And if you turn on some additional visual display here, you can kind of see why. Let me turn on the velocity indicator. Then as it falls, watch what you see. One more time, maybe a little bit slower. Let me do it in half time. So initially it starts with a zero velocity and as it accelerates downward, the velocity increases up until the moment when it hits the ground and then much messier things happen. So this is the motion under constant acceleration, motion in which velocity is constantly changing. And the kinematic formulas that describe this motion is slightly more complicated, which is the reason for these formulas here. This formula covers the most general case, especially your, um, your object might have any initial velocity. For the question we are looking at, we are looking at the simpler case of zero initial speed. So it simplifies down to this expression. And for the purpose of the question, really all you have to do is plug in the numbers. The acceleration is the gravitational acceleration, 10 meter per second squared. And you are given the time in seconds plug those in, you get the answer in meters. Oh, so I guess that means you have to convert your meter answer into centimeter. Um, so that's it. I hope it makes sense. If not, please ask your questions and we'll see what we can do.